People tend to think of cartoons as good, clean fun, and most of the time, they are. But as I said before, these particular cartoons mirrored the times in which they were made. And when you look back, you see elements of sex, violence, and ethnic humor you might not have expected. Movies were wide open in the early 30s. Before the censorship of the Hollywood production code set in, you wouldn't have seen a gag like this just a few years later. The censors would have forbidden it. By the 1940s, censorship was a fact of life, even in cartoons. You might as well move on, Doc. I don't move from here all through the picture. Another staple of the time was ethnic humor in live action films as well as cartoons. Now, it wasn't meant to be malicious. It was an accepted form of comedy back then to a movie-going audience that was filled with immigrants and first-generation Americans who were all part of the melting pot. You go out and pack your clothes, you go get your these and those, and the way you'll go. Oy, oy, oy. Oh, so it wasn't surprising to see a Jewish caricature, or Chinese, or black in the 1930s. Ah, what a upper. honorable doc. When America entered World War II, the cartoonists went crazy making fun of the Japanese and the Germans. No exaggeration was too great, especially when the target was the enemy. Black stereotypes prevailed longer than most others, and some of them are awkward to watch today. But the people who made the hip cartoons even made fun of the stereotypes. My body might belong to you, but my soul belongs to Warner Brothers. My hair's cold black, but my name's so white. I wash it all day, and I got the blues in the night. In 1943, Bob Clampett directed a wild spoof of Walt Disney's first animated feature called Coal Black and the Seven Dwarfs that also took stereotypes to an extreme of absurdity. Yes, attitudes were starting to change in the 40s. And something else was changing, too. The war was on. Cartoons were getting bolder, brasher, and sexier. That's right, 